Well, hey now, welcome to Fitz's Electric Bar, Fitz here. And uh, I'm entering Jack, the Vinyl Martinis contest. Jack, you can strike another one on or add another one onto the pile of all the people that are uh, um, coming into your contest. And um, great idea. I'm gonna put uh, Jack's Vinyl Martini link down below. And also um, the start this off with three um, YouTube channels that I really enjoy. Um, I don't know that these guys need any extra love per se. Um, they've all done pretty well, but I'm still going to call them out in terms of ones that I really enjoy and a bit why I enjoy them, which is part of Jack's contest. And then I'm going to uh, feature um, a discography. Again, part of Jack's contest is I'm going to feature the discogra discography and collection of one Nico Case. Somebody that I really love and um, I'm gonna kind of go through her, her catalog as well. I might uh, do a deeper dive on Nico at another time, but uh, now's as good as any to, uh, to jump in and kind of uh, celebrate the career of one Nico Case, who I think is just absolutely fabulous. So starting off, the th I, well, yeah, so uh, Jack said, let's do two, uh, so I'm gonna do three. Um, I'm just a constant reprobate who's breaking the rules all the time. And um, so here are my three. So Brian's, uh, who, who runs Embryonic Robot. Uh, Brian's very prolific. Um, I think he's maybe a little younger than me, but we're not, well, he's definitely younger than me, but um, I like to think that we're not that far apart. Uh, fellow Torontonians, I live now in Vancouver, but grew up in Toronto. So he features a lot of Canadian and particular Toronto music, which I really love, but he doesn't restrict himself to that. Very broad interest from, uh, John Cale to, um, you know, goth and, you know, loves The Cure, loves The Clash, uh, famously loves The Smiths, did a huge retro on The Smiths. And uh, so I always enjoy his um, episodes and what he has to say about music and often um, turns me on a lot of stuff that I uh, maybe knew about but didn't know and um, will guide me in the direction of what might be good there. Second channel is This Sonic Obsession, uh, Steve and John, um, based out of uh, the Maritimes in Canada. Again, you know, sharing similar eras and ages, uh, maybe Canada, but the era part can't be uh, discarded too easily because there's a lot of stuff that we would share that we really mutually love, you know, deep love of Dylan and Neil Young and other stuff. But of course, there's stuff that I'd never heard of before that they both enjoy. And of course, the two of them have kind of different opinions. And one of the nice things I like what their channel is, is that there's two of them. So it kind of goes back and forth, which is good. And they definitely share uh, interests, but they have also um, different views on different releases. So that's really good, this Sonic Obsession. And then the third one that I really enjoy, the youngster among the group is uh, Todd over at Lost Mixtapes. Uh, I think Brian is over about 860 subscribers, so he's doing pretty well. This Sonic Obsession, 700. We got to get them up to 1,000. And uh, Lost Mixtapes, Todd is uh, over 1,000 now. I think he's around 1,200 plus, so which is great. And I think they're all really quality channels. Todd, um, what I like is his um, episodes are somewhat unique. He has some interesting thematic uh, and different angles. So he's about as far away from flipping through your records and just showing what you got. He goes deeper. And uh, I really like that. He uh, wears his passions on his sleeve. Um, he's willing to say what he doesn't like and what he really likes and why he likes it. Very articulate and interesting guy. And um, I really like what he has to say. A lot of shared interests, replacements, Neil Young, among others. Um, but again, a lot of stuff that I um, haven't heard or didn't know about and has led me down a path to start to uh, check out some of that music. So Lost Mix Lost Mixtapes, again, those three channels I'll put down below. So <clears throat> we're already at four minutes and I haven't even started my discography on Nico Case. So here we go. Um, I first discovered Nico Case with her first record. She came out with a couple records of Nico Case and her boyfriends. And um, this record was the first time I think I ever heard the song Duchess, which is the Scott Engel, AKA Scott Walker song. And l later I heard Scott Walker. I don't know what was the first one that really hit me over the head. And I've become a massive Scott Walker fan. Just love his vocals, his kind of, some of his earlier stuff is a bit schmaltzy in the best way, which again, Richard Hawley and 
other artists like that that I really like, some of uh, Elvis's Memphis stuff and things like that. Um, but this record, yeah, it's got Duchess, uh, again, Scott uh, Walker. Uh, this was the just a, a, a great, like they, she's referred to as country noir. And I think that is a really, really good way of describing Nico Case because some of it sounds a little bit like something off of Twin Peaks, a little bit of Chris Isaac. It's got some of the sort of 50s and 60s twang to it. It's definitely got some country stuff, but she's all her, you know, her own in terms of her vocals. She sings, she's got such a rich voice and she can sing very fully. Mostly, she sounds like a force of nature and I love that about her. So this is her first record. This one came out, when was it? I got my little cheat sheet here. Uh, came out in uh, 1997. So Nico Case and her boyfriends. And the next one, and the last one that was under the, her moniker of Nico Case and her boyfriends was Furnace Room Lullaby, uh, this particular one. And um, these are all on Mint Records. Mint Records is a Vancouver-based <clears throat> label. Um, Nico Case lived in Vancouver for a while. She came to Vancouver to go to the Emily Carr Institute of Art and Design. She didn't finish it, but she was in uh, punk bands here, Mao and um, Cub. And then kind of went down another path. She had to leave when she didn't finish her degree. Thank you, Wikipedia, for a little background information. I won't bore you with what you can find on Wikipedia, but I like to create a little bit of context. And she also, you know, in her time in New York, got to know the members of the New Pornographers and became a member of the New Pornographers. And I've got a quote here before I go on to her discography that I think is great. Dan Bahar, who's the uh, member of New Pornographers and the leader, uh, kind of uh, main man of Destroyer. I mean, he is Destroyer, basically. This is his description of Nico's music that comes in the uh, Wild Creatures Greatest Hits that came out in 2022. So Dan says, Nico's approach to arrangements and ambience is equal parts melodic and jarring, and I'm always surprised by the turns they take. It is fearless music. It is urgent art, maybe the most urgent body of songs of the last 20 years. That's a bold statement, but she's in the running. We make a mess of ourselves and others and the earth, and Nico sings these incredibly eloquent odes to that fact. Um, and there's another quote here, which I'm just going to read briefly, and it's David Byrne, and he's a big fan of Nico Cases as well. And one of the things he says is that her songs seem driven by the character and their stories and situations. So it's not a verse, cor verse, verse, chorus kind of thing. Sometimes the song is guided by the story more than the usual verse, chorus, verse structures we might be used to. We, the listener, have to imagine ourselves as that character. When we do, what might seem at first impressionistic is, in fact, very straightforward and descriptive. She does. She creates these great atmospheres and moods. And, um, boy, her lyrics also are so good. I think she's not really gotten her full due in terms of the quality of her lyric writing and her performance of her own um, songs and, and lyrics. This one is uh, her third record and this is just called Canadian Ant. This is actually a hard thing to get now. Um, this came out on a separate label, I think. I don't think this was Mint Records, but um, Lady Pilot, which I think is maybe her publishing company. It's the name of one of her songs as well. Note the fox there. She's got a theme of fox or deer in a lot of her album artwork, which is kind of interesting, especially animals. If you ever go to her Instagram account, she's clearly very inspired by and very connected to animals, horses and other animals and cats and things like that. Um, this is great. This is mostly covers of Canadian artists and includes Dreaming Man by Neil Young. There's a song called, here called In California, and I don't know who the author of the or the writer of the song. It's a gorgeous song, and one of the lines in it is, uh, they say it's beautiful when it rains in California. Um, which until recently didn't happen a heck of a lot. Um, can't even get this on the, the uh, streaming services, unfortunately, but I, I really like this record. So then she kind of went solo, as it were, and came out with Blacklisted. Um, and that's uh, when she really got, uh, you know, given the country noir um, term. And this one has Deep Red Bells on it, which is a well-known song of hers. Uh, and it's, a, it's an excellent record as well. Uh, this particular one, she was, some of the people she's played with, she's played with M. Ward, uh, has played on some of her music. Uh, the Sadies back her up. This and this album, which came out, uh, what was this? Um, the Tigers Have Spoken, and this was a live recording, and this came out in 2004. 
And um, this is with the Sadie's backing her up, apparently recorded in Chicago and Toronto. I wonder if it was at the old Horseshoe Tavern, but uh, it's a really good record. And then what I think is her best record, the one that I really, really love is Fox Confessor Brings the Flood. Um, this is an outstanding record. So this, this record's got some of the songs on this one, uh, Hold On, Hold On, um, Star Witness, and one of my favorites, Magpie to the Morning. Um, again, lyrically beautiful, just gorgeous songs. I was doing my morning walk this morning and Magpie to the Morning came on and that's when I just started going into a deep uh, Nico Case uh, listening session and um, deciding that she was going to be the artist that I'd feature as part of my entrance to the contest for Jack the Vinyl Martini. So Fox Confessor brings the brings on the flood. Um, next one, Middle Cyclone. <laughs> Quite the cover there. And um, final one that I have of hers, this isn't her final one, but the final one I have of hers is um, Hell On. No, is... Uh, uh, the worse things get, the harder I fight, the harder I fight, the more I love you. And again, more, you can see the, the nature around Nico Case. She's clearly a woman who loves nature and animals. And I do not know this record that well. I was just thinking, it's like I just ordered this from Amazon that just arrived because this was one that just somehow came in and I didn't give it a listen. And I'm going to be um, making that a top priority. So um, that's my artist... Um, for the contest and again Nico Case this is a greatest hits record so this is the only thing I have on vinyl I got everything else on uh, on CD uh, but this is great it's got all the songs that I mentioned with the exception of Magpie to the Morning but uh, it's a wonderful collection of greatest hits and I wanted to have some of her stuff on vinyl her sound that country noir a little bit americana or whatever i've i've often thought that although her music is beautifully produced i think daryl newdorf um, has done a lot of the production who's a canadian producer and musician but um i would just love to hear an album of hers with uh production by either t-bone burnett or daniel lenoir um, her music just really screams out for that kind of level of production and um and arrangements of her music. So uh, maybe one day. Nico Case, three channels, and uh, top of the hat to you, Jack, and uh, hoping you get your, uh, you reach your target for uh, subscribers. Carpe diem.